Okay, so this video comes to you in the form of thought stew. So when you have a bunch of bits and bobs and ends in your fridge at the end of the week, you put them all together into a stew and it actually kind of tastes good. So we're going to use a bunch of thoughts and feelings from throughout the week and kind of make them one cohesive thing. Um, so the first thing is Larry Smith, who is an econ professor at the University of Waterloo. He's been teaching here for 40 years and maybe one tenth of the student population here has gone through his tutelage. So the thing that he teaches is um, how to build an entrepreneurial culture, problem identification, and all of like the, the softer, more intangible things, but like what exactly makes innovation happen. So he's talked to a lot of students throughout his career. I talked to him last year. <clears throat> I'm going to talk to him next week. And in preparation for that, I was going through a bunch of his videos and transcripts to get a sense of what are good questions to ask him. So he has one TED talk in particular that's pretty infamous, and that is about uh, why you will have <clears throat> why you'll fail to have a great career and this went viral like pre-viral was even a thing so it got millions of views in like 2011 or something like that which is kind of crazy um so big big famous guy um so he talks about how oftentimes it's that people lack the courage to explore things that they would actually want to spend the rest of their life working on um, I think I disagree a little bit. I think it's it's less courage and more so like financial stability and like uh, the feeling of security. But maybe that's just like a a trap that people that is a very valid justification. But the reality is that it's actually really unintuitive because nine to five jobs are going away and that like you'll actually end up in like a a grueling situation that you don't really enjoy if you don't take risks early. So um, yeah, a lot of thinking around that. And then he also has some thoughts about, uh, this is, this is interesting, this stuck out to me, um, how people pin their lack of courage and career on their personal relationships, seeing that they're less risk-taking because they want to be a good friend, daughter, partner, but in reality it actually makes them resentful, uh, because imagine looking to your kid like 10 years down the line and saying, oh, the reason why I couldn't achieve my dreams is because of you, like, you, like, um, kids of parents that feel fulfilled and happy and satisfied with the work that they do will produce much better outcomes um, than the opposite. So obviously there are extremes to that that uh, can be taken and that makes this axiom like no longer valid. But as like a general thing, it was really interesting to hear him phrase it like that. Um, so yeah, one of the questions that I think I'll probably end up asking him is like what virtues he thinks that are actually going to become more and more important over time. Uh, so I guess like resilience is generally one that I expect him to answer with, but I think that there's, I just feel like in the past three months or so, things are changing in a way that are like really, really fast. And maybe, and maybe it's just a delusion or maybe my life hasn't been long enough yet because 30 years ago people were saying the same thing about like their situation but I think that and maybe like the pandemic just like slowed things down and I, my brain wasn't fully formed to like observe the world around me up until now but yeah I I don't know how to make people feel okay about this and maybe maybe the point is not maybe the point is that like people have to feel a little bit uncomfortable to change and like get up with the times and stay updated so maybe that whole mental model of like needing people to feel secure is not a valid one but i think that like for the most part i would like i would like people to feel okay so that that's one of the things i'm thinking about the other is that i think it's really fun when people poke you and they're like oh my god have you seen this thing but that's the thing that inspired you to make you feel make them feel like that in the first place okay more concrete example to like put this into illustration um s like people sending me the senius articles and being like have you seen this like this is this is exactly what you're doing I'm like yeah <laughs> like so true like like everything is by design or people walking to a room seeing that all their friends are there and they're having great conversations or um watching the demos and realizing oh my god there's so many art projects like i didn't realize that this was a place that i could do this too i'm actually interested in xyz and <laughs> just having the little smile in the back of your head and on your face <clears throat> because this was intentionally, very intentionally curated and planned. And I think that is just like a feeling I'll have to get used to for the rest of my life because the types of problems that I wanna work on, if it's done well, you don't notice it. It just fades into the background <clears throat> and becomes like a mainstay of your life. And you just kind of um, have a little grin as 
things work ever so slightly smoother around you. Yeah, I'm, I'm really okay with that, though. I think it's cool to fairy godparent people and by extension like a larger city or municipality or civilization like it just it, it's fun to do that yeah um other soup thoughts other stew stew ideas oh limited editions it's really beautiful um yake sticker <laughs> and to end off with a quote uh which is what Larry Smith ended off with. He said, Now, I will not wish you good luck, because that is an insult to your intelligence. I wish you great courage in your success. And I was like, there. <laughs> so, I wish you great courage in your week and subsequent time. 